Hello and welcome. My name is Brandon Wendell, Charter Market Technician, and I'm going to go over a few of the cryptocurrencies out there from a technical standpoint, kind of get an idea of what the heck is going on and what might be happening for this week, week of February 6th, 2022. So looking at the weekly chart of Bitcoin here to start off with, you can see that we've had a pretty good move to the downside. And unfortunately for the bulls, we actually did go below 40 here. So the fact that we put in a low below 40 tells me that there's more downside to come. As of right now, we are kind of holding the downward trend. I'm not sure if we actually even have an official trend line that has multiple touches, but eh, not really, only two touches along the way. But overall, looking pretty bearish. And we may be in a little bit of corrective mode right now. As you can see, we bottomed out. Get them on a weekly. So two weeks ago, we started bottoming out and pulling back a little bit. However, on this pullback, we are actually running into the little pause area right here that broke down. So this may act as a little bit of selling pressure or supply. And if we just look above, there's actually a better zone potentially. No, actually I take that back because that is inside. So let's just take a look right here and see if this is our retracement, where we might be retracing to. We've already surpassed the 23.6. So that suggests that we may continue to go a little higher to the 38.2% or 45,376 before we continue to impulse downward. As of right now, we had a previous impulse and correction. And you can see we were right on time for our newest correction because you can see we impulsed down 61.8% roughly and then started to pull back. So if we continue to move down, we have another target now of 23,270 whenever we can find our top, which may be at 45,376. I want to go down to the daily chart, see if there's a supply zone that might tell us a little bit more of where we're going to turn around. So starting from current price, you can see we're having trouble getting above 60, and that's a bearish sign typically. We actually have drop, base, base, drop, and I don't really like this as a zone. The reason why is I hate zones where the leg out candle goes above the base in candles, but I've noticed them working a lot lately. And that's this right here. You have drop, base, base, and then that's your leg out candle, which actually went above the base and candles first before the selling pressure kicked in. Let's zoom in a little more here. You can see though, it's working. We started stalling out right in that area. We've got some indecision on Friday, or sorry, Saturday, this is uh, today, Saturday the 5th. And we're stalling out there, even though there's still bullish pressure and we are below 60, which is a bearish sign. So keep an eye out for this on Sunday, if we break the low of that candle, 4883.7, look out below, we're heading down. You know, initially we may stall out at this, 37389, 36, but I don't see it holding very well before we continue to move lower. And if we do end up breaking higher above the high of today, so we put in a brand new high right here, and 41,926. So if we break that high and continue to go through this area, now we can take a look back to see where we might stop. And I don't really see any zones here. This is the first zone up here. Rally base and drop right there. It took us to a fresh low. Eh, not really, it kind of held. It's not the best of zones, but that's your next area. And of course, any of these Fibonacci retracements can help us out as well for pausing. So keep an eye out on that. We can go down to a lower time frame just to see if there's anything else that's being thrown at us as far as where we might go. But again, if we break the high, uh, Saturday's high, if we break that on Sunday going into Monday, expect us to push higher, possibly stalling out at 38.2 or the 50% retracement, but ultimately pulling back pretty deep once we get to 50,000. If not, if we end up breaking the low here, then look out below, we're gonna continue impulsing down. Drop down to, let's see, we're on this daily. We'll go to the four hour time frame just to see if there's more detail. If we do start to drop, we have this area that was a demand zone on the daily, also contains several demand zones on the four hour, one of which has already been tested. You see, this was rally base rally, and then we tested it right there. Once again, I'm not a huge fan of the zones where the leg out candle goes below the basin candle, but they've been working in the past, so we'll keep an eye out for it. So we have demand in this area, basically 38,251, 37,073. If we start to fall down from this high, 
well, technically we've got to break that low, which is about 40,000. I should make that exact. There we are. Yep, 4883.7. Now, if we move upwards, see if there's anything else going on here. There is supply on the one hour, or sorry, four hour time frame right here. And not much above that. Really, I would take it all the way up. To there. So as we go forward here, you can see once again, if we start to find some bullish pressure, uh, unfortunately, it's not really a great buying opportunity because you run into supply almost immediately. So I'd probably wait on that. If we can break out of any of these, actually, if you break out of this high, you're going to run right into Fibonacci retracement. So I'm going to sit back on Bitcoin a little bit. The only buying opportunity I'd really look at would be way down here at 38.251. But that doesn't, or it did show on the bigger time frame, didn't it? Yeah, it was also drop based rally on the daily demand zone. So that might be an okay buying spot. But on that, not really seeing a whole lot of opportunity right now. And overall, I don't even know if we're going to be able to break out to give you buying opportunities. I wouldn't buy if we drop straight down from here. I'd wait. I would only buy if we jumped up first before we moved down. So it just looks a little bit risky. Going into Ethereum, we'll start off with the bigger picture. And again, I'll clean up my charts here. On the weekly chart of Ethereum, you can see same thing. We came back to this drop base drop area. And we are retracing the prior impulses down. Right there. And, well, if you use the body, it kind of lines up, but I go wick to wick when there's only one candle here. You can see we've already hit this area as a supply zone. Not the best looking supply zone. You don't have enough follow through here. So there's a possibility of going higher. And this does look a lot more bullish than Bitcoin did. And we had a smaller area of supply because we had run into the supply zone much, much faster. So going down to the daily time frame, just to see if we can fine tune this a little. Yeah, we can. We've got, let's see, what's the low here? 3206. Here we've got a close. 3212, so that's definitely within. So there's our immediate zone that we're pushing up to. We've got the 50% retracement in the middle of it. I don't really have anything else that's great below that. As far as a demand zone, this is one that's forming right now. We have rally, base, base, and rally. Also contains the uh, 23.6 retracement, which could act as a little bit of demand if prices do come down. So we have a push to the upside right now. We're retracing that downward move. We may be pushing. I don't think this 38.2 is going to hold well. I think we're going to move into the supply zone. If that doesn't hold and we continue to push higher, we do have another supply right here, 37.65. And then another one right at our upper zone, 786, there's another retracement value. So there's a lot of selling pressure that's going to push us down. The question is which one is going to hit first or which one's going to hold. I know which one will hit first, the lowest, but which one's going to hold, we don't know. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye out on the momentum as we come up to each one of these levels because it is likely to continue the push to the downside. Again, looking at that weekly chart. We have been below 40, which is a very bearish sign. So we're just simply getting a small retracement right now. And on the daily, I'm really not sure which one it's going to hit. But I'll just keep an eye out for each one before it continues to move down. If we go down to the four hour chart, see if we can fine tune any of this. Eh, not a whole lot. We do have an area of demand right here that we can keep an eye out for. Like there. So in going back, yeah, we can see that this can be shrunken down a little bit to a much tighter area. So this will be the first area that I look at for a possible shorting opportunity. However, one of the things that I look for is how much bullish momentum we have. So I'm not going to want to sell the 3202 unless we have a negative divergence up here. Because if we're this bullish, we're likely to be able to break through that area. So keep an eye out at that 3202. Yeah, I don't have anything else along the way. For opportunities and then yeah, that's a pretty similar picture here i don't really see anything else any different that's what i was looking at just fine-tuning that 
in the higher zone. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get all the way up there, but I'll just delete this and draw fresh. That's what we've got right at the 78.6. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see which one of these levels might be able to continue this move to the downside, but I'm not gonna try trading them if we're above 60 on the RSI. Instead, I would only trade them if we have some sort of negative divergence because that's the way we would push to the downside. On XRP, let's see, let's again, we'll start off on the big picture, kind of get an idea of what the heck is going on here. And you can see that we also have moved down into bearish territory. We did hit a small demand zone and are holding that demand, but we ended up going below 40 as we came into this demand. You see the drop base rally? Whoops, let me clean this up a little more. There we go. Again, drop base rally. Tagged one, so we went a little deeper into the zone, went below 40, so all we're gonna do is a small pullback before going lower. And if we do go lower, our next target is right here. You have, I think it's drop base rally. Not the best of zones, but that's it, 31, 27. So right now we are pulling back kind of into this drop base drop. Now 69, 89, 80, 59. And you can see we got nothing but bearish pressure. So if we go down to the daily time frame, see if we can fine tune this a little better. We absolutely can. Oh, no, we can't. That doesn't work. So looks like we've got rally. One, two, three, four, five, basing. There's your drop. So not the strongest of zones. It definitely picks up here, but there's no leggy and candle to give me a good zone right in here. So this is all I've got. And again, I should actually should go back to the weekly time frame, put in the Fibonacci retracements to get an idea of where we're coming from. There we are. Again, go back down to the daily. And now we can look to see if any of these retracement values line up with the zones we're finding. And really, the 38.2 is above the zone that we just found at 77.01 to about 80.59, I believe it is. So keep an eye out for that. And if we are below 60 as we come up to that area, that'll look like a pretty good turning point for price. Above that, then you do have something here, which is not very powerful. Oops, wrong one. There we go. So again, you've got drop, base, 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 and there's your drop. It didn't break the new low, so this may not be a very strong area of supply. I probably wouldn't want to trade that one. Really want to see lots of strength. Honestly, this all may be, just be a retest of a prior area. See, we have rally, base, 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 drop. That was a retest of it right there. So I don't think there's going to be much left over as far as buying pressure. So honestly, if we're very weak, we should just stall out this lower zone. If not, you know... I don't, know, I don't see anything else really that's about it so expecting like i said a little bit of a pullback now to 7701 before we continue the move to the downside if i go back to the weekly from this daily we should be able to project and get an idea of where we're going to so we have this impulse down correction back up as of now to 7701 And there it is. So now we got our projections down. And wouldn't you know, it lines right up with that weekly zone. So what I'm kind of seeing right now, again, is the potential pullback, as you can see, to 7701 with a stop above 80.59. And really, you could have a target here of 48.25, but the ultimate target is going to be that 30.48 right there. And it's backed up by both the weekly demand and the Fibonacci extension, the previous impulse. Kind of curious to see if our previous impulse here gave us a good measurement. And look at that, it did. So the previous impulse down, I'll change the color so we can see it a little better. Oop, that's the wrong color. Let me go back. There we go. You can see drop. There's the pullback. And then look at that, 61.8%. So these extension numbers and measurements really do work. So that's telling us that. We push down, if we pull back to the 7701, we're likely to push back down to 4825. 
and then ultimately 3048. Moving on to Cardano, I'll start off on the weekly chart. I'm just trying to get an idea of what's going on again. And still lots of weakness, but we have some divergence. The divergence is coming where prices are moving lower, but the indicator is pretty much holding the same momentum as before. So that's telling us we might not be able to continue to push lower. Or, sorry, no, uh, we, yeah, we shouldn't be able to push lower. We should get some sort of retracement coming up. And if we do, let's see, we've got, really this is our impulse that we're in now. It's dying off. Could have gone for the entire high, but this is really it. You had an impulse here, correction, and new impulse down. So we're done with that. We're in our second impulse, and now our correction. Dropping down to the daily time frame, just to get an idea of where we might turn. The nearest area of supply is this. And we do have a 50% retracement in there, as well as a 61.8. So it looks as though we might be rallying up, although we're stalling out right now. Can't get above 50, and we can't get above the 23.6 retracement. So keep an eye out on this. If we end up breaking the low of the daily candle from today, as a matter of fact, there it is, at about 109.79, look out below, because we're likely to continue our push downwards from this area. If we do go higher, break the high here at the 23.6 retracement, we're likely to move all the way up to 141. But as of right now, this is showing lots of weakness. And give a downside target of 0.7347 and then 4645, <clears throat> excuse me, 46045, what we're looking at there. So that's what I'm seeing right now, our Cardano. Drop down the four hour time frame. Don't think we got anything different here. It's looking to see if there's any other zones. And nope, you've got an actual zone here drop, base, and drop. It's kind of holding us down. So we're likely to break to fresh lows. And that gives us that impulse down to the 73 area. Going over to Solana on the weekly time frame. Again, I'll start this fresh rather than using previous numbers. And you can see we had an impulse down. We are correcting up this week. The bullish news is we didn't get below 40. You can see we just barely held above it. So we're getting a little correction right now. Really, it's a correcting of this last impulse down, not the entire move. So we're going down to the daily chart, see if anything lines up for us. And there is something at the 50% retracement, it looks like. No, it doesn't really qualify. I was thinking drop, base, drop, but it doesn't. That's a basing candle. So it doesn't really clear, it doesn't work. And, well, wait a minute. Might have too many candles here though. We have one, two, three, four, five, six basing candles. And again, that doesn't clear, so that doesn't work. It's not a good zone. The next zone just above would be, a drop base drop right there. So this is kind of a mess, but we are seeing Little weak retracement back up. Can't really uh, stall in any place. It doesn't look like there's any kind of a zone here whatsoever. So we may just creep up a little more. I don't see anything of high quality, so I'm just going to kind of sit this one out. Go down to the four hour time frame. Let's see if there's anything above. Again, same problem. No quality zones, except at the 50% retracement. There we actually have rally base and finally a clean, clear drop. So we may still continue to push higher. And if we pull back first, not necessarily the best of demands here, but you have rally, base, rally, just barely. So you might have a buying opportunity, again, to push up to the 50% retracement from the weekly chart. That's what I'd be looking at, is possibly buying at 107 with a stop below 101.78, targeting 139. You want to get out, obviously, before that, yeah, we have a negative divergence right now. So this is definitely getting ready to pull back. This is what I mean by the negative divergence. Just miss that. You've got prices making a higher high, but you're doing it with much less momentum than you should. You should always have more momentum, especially when you're making some new highs. So the fact that we've got this negative divergence, when we pull back, if we hold above 40 on the RSI, then you're okay to buy here for the bounce. If we're not above 40, then we may be getting a reversal of the trend and you don't want to be in. So looking once again at the daily time frame, this is still not 
bullish we're in a corrective mode but there still may be some opportunity to push a little bit higher before we collapse again so looking at that target again on the four hour time frame there's the opportunity buying a 107 with a stop below 101.78 targeting maybe i don't know 137.75 somewhere in that area so that's what i've got on the cryptos if you got any questions let me know hopefully you enjoyed this and got some good information out of it if you did, please hit the subscribe and the like button. I appreciate that. And you'll get the next videos and on and on and on. So until next time, trade safe, trade well, and take care.